But it's interesting to me that two people can see the exact same thing, witness the exact same thing, and come away with two different perceptions of what just took place. It happens all the time. That's why in court cases they bring witnesses, and often witnesses will testify of something that they saw that the other person who was right there witnessing didn't see. I've got an exercise I want you to do with me. I want you to look at the screen, if you would. You're going to see a photograph of, well, look at the photograph. What do you see? What do you see? Hold it to yourself. Don't tell it. What do you see? What do you see? What's interesting to me, and I'm going to tell you in just a moment, don't turn. I'll tell you in just a minute what you could have seen. Fact of the matter is, everyone here probably saw something different. If you go to the next slide, you see some people saw a duck and some people saw a rabbit. Next slide, please. Some people saw a duck and some people saw a rabbit. Which one did, how many of you saw a duck first? How many of you saw a rabbit first? See there, I just made my point. Amen, let's go home. <laughs> but we all, we all see the exact same picture, exact same thing, but we saw different things. And that's true of life as well. When you look at the people around you, the people that you face every single day, and you hear their cry, maybe it's a loud cry, maybe it's an audible cry, but maybe it's a, an emotional cry, a heartfelt cry, what do you see? When you're driving your car, you go under one of the bridges here or overpasses in Houston, what do you see? You see, it's important to see something. And why is it important that what we see? Number one, what you see influences what you know. What you see influences what you know. And what you see influences where you go. And what you see influences what you do. Ultimately, if you see nothing, you know nothing, and you do nothing. Nothing gets done. What we see is important. And my question to you this morning is, what do you see? But I'm not the first one to ask that question. Turn in your Bible to Mark chapter 8. We're going to go through this story. I'm going to go rather quickly for sake of time this morning. But, but it's a question that I didn't ask. It's a question Jesus asked. What do you see? Mark chapter 8, verse 22 through 26. I want to offer a word of prayer while you're turning. Father, speak to your word this morning. Anoint our eyes that we see clearly. And I pray, Heavenly Father, your word will lift a fire within our spirit and heart. Not only for our life and for those around us. And not only for our maximum impact environment. But that you will give us eyes to see the world through your eyes. And we honor you and praise you for your word going forth. And the spirit bringing revelation in Jesus name. And everybody said amen. Amen. I'm going to be reading Mark chapter 8, beginning with verse 22. And they came to Bethesda, where Jesus was. And some people brought to him a blind beggar and begged him to touch him. Begged Jesus to touch the blind beggar. Now I want to add here this morning, and you're going to hear that word beggar over and over again, because he was a beggar. But that man represented more than just himself. That man represented an outcast. He had no power. He couldn't even get to Jesus on his own. Somebody had to bring him to Christ. Somebody cared enough to be the catalyst for his miracle. That miracle would not have occurred had not somebody cared enough about that beggar. That man who had no power, no authority of his own, could not navigate through the world on his own, but had to rely upon the compassion upon the care of others around him. And somebody was the catalyst for the miracle that was about to take place. We don't know the names. We don't know the name of the beggar. We don't know the name of the one who brought him to Jesus. Verse 23. And he took the blind beggar, Jesus, took the blind beggar by the hand, and excuse me, and he took the blind beggar, Jesus, by the hand and led the beggar out into the village. And remember, he's a beggar. He has no authority, he has no power. And then Jesus spit and had the beggars and 
And Jesus had spit on the beggar's eyes and laid his hands on him. And Jesus asked the question that I've already asked. What do you see? Not everything that God does has to be on display. The Bible tells us that Jesus took him away from the crowd. He took him away. Isn't that interesting? That most of the time in a religious environment, everybody wants to see what's going on. Everybody wants to be involved in what's going on. It's it's as though we call the news media and say, we're going to have a healing service today because we want the word out. What did Jesus do? Jesus took him to a solitary place. No one else was there, save the disciples. And I want you to know this morning, not everything that God does has to be on display. Not everything God does has to be on display. And don't be discouraged if God does something miraculous in your life and nobody seems to get excited about it but you. It's for you. It's God's work for you personally in your life. Jesus asked the beggar the question, the one who had no authority, had no power. He asked him the question, what do you see? And this morning I ask you that question as well. I ask all of us that question, what do you see? Verse 24, the beggar looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. The beggar who could not see before, who relied upon somebody else to be the catalyst of his miracle, now he could see. Praise God! Miracle took place. The man who could not see can now see. But what did he see? He saw trees. People that look like trees walking. Now, it indicates to me that perhaps he could see at one time because he knew what a tree was. But he didn't. He could see, but he couldn't see clearly. Couldn't see clearly. He might have said, I'll settle for that. And I don't you know that a man who could not see was blind and now could see something would be happy with that. But Jesus wasn't happy with that. Because Jesus doesn't do anything halfway. When Jesus does something, he does it all the way. The good work that he began in you, he will see it through until it is complete. Not complete by our standards. Not complete by our desires, but complete by his will. He asks the beggar, what do you see? The answer is, I see, but I, I don't see clearly. And Jesus said, that's not enough. And I ask you the same question this morning, what do you see? And do you see clearly? Verse 25, then Jesus laid his hands on the beggar's eyes again. Aren't you glad that Jesus was going to complete this miracle? And he will complete the miracle in your life as well. He'll complete that good work that he started. The journey is only in the beginning and he will see it through until that journey is complete. Jesus never settles for things done halfway. And it is our responsibility as believers to press in all the way. Not to settle, but to press in. And the scripture goes on to say, And the beggar opened his eyes after Jesus prayed with him in that private place, because Jesus laid his hands on him again. The beggar opened his eyes, and his sight was completely restored. And he saw everything clearly. Boy, that's, that's, that's something to shout about. The man could see for the first time, or perhaps regain his sight. And Jesus sent him to his home saying, do not enter into the village again. How many times Jesus would heal, do a miraculous work in somebody's life and say, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Jesus asked the beggar, what do you see? The beggar's response is, I see, but I don't see clearly. And the beggar might have been, you you know, I I don't know exactly the the dynamics of this this story. It could have been that When the beggar could see, there had to be rejoicing in his heart. He had to be be celebrating the fact that he could see anything. And he might have even said, I can see, I, I can't see clearly, but thank you, Jesus, and turned to walk away. And if he had done that, if that would have been his posture, I believe Jesus would have grabbed him and pulled him back and said, I'm not done yet. And I want you to know this morning, the promises that God has made to you and the work that God has done to you, don't walk away. God isn't finished yet. And he will complete that work. He asked the beggar, what do you see? I I see, but I don't see clearly. And Jesus said, that's not good enough. And he touched him again with that final touch. That touch of compassion, that touch of love, a touch of power. His eyes were open and he could see. 
But not only could he see, brothers and sisters, he didn't need glasses. He could see 2020. Perfect sight, because what Jesus does is always perfect. I challenge you today with the words, the question, what do you see? Man was a beggar. No value to society. He had nothing to contribute, to give. In fact, only to receive. He was only a taker. Forgotten, belittled, an outcast. And yet, someone cared about him. Someone cared about his situation. Can I tell you the question, what do you see? This person that brought this beggar to Jesus could see something nobody else saw. He saw something nobody else saw. He had a hope nobody else had. Because that person took time to take this beggar, this outcast, this forgotten one, powerless, taken to Jesus. Someone cared about the beggar. Someone thought he had value. And Jesus asked the beggar, what do you see? And I challenge you today with that question, which begs an answer from each and every one of us. What do you see when you see the beggars of this world? When you see those that are in need in this world, in your maximum impact environment? When we know that there are literally billions of people who have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ? And not only somewhere else, but people in our own maximum impact environment that perhaps have been forgotten, have been marginalized, sat upon, discarded. What do you see? And do you see clearly? When you see the beggars of this world that are hopeless, existing in spiritual darkness, living in absolute futility of nothing more than survival, abandoned, some abandoned by family, abandoned by governments, abandoned by the world, and no one seems to care. No one seems to care. What do you see? And I want to encourage this morning and pray that God will open our eyes to see clearly those that have lost their way in this world. To see clearly. I wonder how many people walk by that beggar every day. Some perhaps with a little bit of compassion to give him a little bit. Some just walk on by. Some perhaps going to the other side of the street. This man's life meant nothing to them. But somebody cared. And that person, unknown to us, unnamed to us, was the catalyst for a miracle in that beggar's life. What about those that we see at home? We go to work with, we go to school with, live next door to, rub shoulders with them every day. What do you see? And can we, do we dare to see clearly? And my prayer is this, Lord, open our eyes that we may see clearly. And if God opens our eyes, and I'm talking about literally, I'm talking about literally seeing somebody. You know, there are people that are invisible. They're invisible. I'm not saying they can't be seen by anybody. I'm saying most people choose not to see them. Walk right by them. Drive in a car right by them. I remember, I've told you this before, but I remember driving down Fondren here years ago, years ago. There was a man standing, a homeless man, standing with a plastic cup in his hands, asking for help. And I am not proud of my response internally. Just, hey guy, go get a job. Help yourself, dude. And the minute I spoke those words, the minute they came into my mind, the Holy Spirit spoke to me these words. That's somebody's father. That's somebody's brother. That's somebody's husband. That's somebody. Broke my heart that I had such a calloused attitude. And it's easy to do. It's easy to have that kind of attitude. But this beggar found his healing, found his deliverance because somebody saw him. Somebody cared. I challenge you today. What do you see? And do you see clearly? 
And when we look at the needs of humanity at home and around the world, it's overwhelming. I testify to you this morning, it is overwhelming. And oftentimes we think, what can I do? I'm just one person. I, I, can't, I can't feed everybody. I can't deliver everybody. I can't save anybody. What in the world can I do? I'm just one person. And what's unfortunate about it, I wonder how many people pass that beggar thinking there's nothing I can do for him, so why even try? The reality of it is, you're right. What can one person do? Just one person. Can't do it all myself. You're absolutely right. You can't do it all. None of us in this room, none of us online can do it all. But we can do our part. One person changed the life of a beggar. One person. One person changed the life of a beggar. Altered his entire existence. One person. What did they do? He just brought him to Jesus. Didn't cost them anything, some time. But what they saw moved them in that moment. Can I just tell you, I believed it was the Holy Spirit. I don't know whether that person believed in Jesus or not, but they heard about Christ. They heard about what he could do and trusted, believed, perhaps just hoped that Jesus could help this man. He can't do it all, but each of us can do our part and together, together, We can do more together. Can't do it all, but together with other believers, not only at Brazewood, but around the world, we can do it. Together we can do more than any one of us can do alone. So why is what we see important? Because what you see will influence what you know. What you see will influence where you go. And what you see will influence what you do. And my challenge this morning is this. What do you see? When you came here this morning and you were driving in your car or walking to the church, what did you see? And can I tell you? You saw needs. We saw needs all around us. All around us. My prayer again, Lord, open our eyes that we may see clearly. But not just that we'd see clearly, open our eyes that we see through the eyes of the Spirit. And my invitation to each of us here this morning is this. Perhaps you feel like that beggar. Maybe you can see, but maybe your needs are deeper than that. Maybe you feel hopeless. Maybe you feel as though you're swimming upstream in spiritual darkness. Maybe to you life is futile. Nothing you do gets you ahead. Nothing you do seems to matter to you or perhaps anybody else. Or maybe you're here this morning and you feel like you've been abandoned. Abandoned by family, by friends, abandoned by people that believed once in you. Abandoned by the world, abandoned by the government, abandoned. I'm here to tell you, God will never abandon you. In fact, the Bible says he'll stick closer to you than any family member ever could. And God never abandons his own. What do you see? But a question would also be, what does God see? And Lord, help me to see what you see. But I've got good news. If you feel this morning like that beggar, if you give God a chance, if you give him a chance, he will change the story of your life. You'll change it. it. It may not be as drastic as blinded eyes opened. But remember, the beginning was his eyes were open, though he couldn't see clearly. But Jesus wasn't satisfied with that. It may be the beginning is new life, a new beginning, new hope. Establishment of more than just existence and survival. But I'm telling you this, that's not the end. When you come to Jesus, that's just the beginning of what he will do in your life. And he will, he will continue to work in your life until he is finished. And how will that be? How long will that be? For the rest of your life. He will be with you. He'll walk with you. And my brother and sister, though everyone in the world abandons you, Jesus will never abandon your life. 
He's with us always, the Bible says, even to the very end of this world. I have good news for you. Turn your life over to Jesus. It's as simple as that. Not complicated. It truly is not complicated. Humanity makes everything complicated. God keeps everything simple. Come to the Lord. The Bible says faith. What is faith? Trust. Just trust God. But Pastor Steve, I don't know how much I can trust him. I'm, I'm new to this. I, I, I've been hurt so much. I, I, I'm, I'm hesitant of trusting anybody. Well, God knows that. If you'll just come to him as much trust as you have in this moment, he'll accept you just the way you are. He'll take you just the way you are. Messed up, lost, he'll accept you just the way you are. But, but know this, God will never leave you the way he finds you. The beggar came blind, but he left with 20-20 vision. You come to Jesus just the way you are, but you won't leave the way you came. He'll begin to transform your very life. Psalms chapter 34 verse 17 says, is anyone crying for help? Here's your hope. God is listening and he's ready to rescue you. Pray a simple prayer. Father, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of the wrong I've done in my life. Forgive me of all my mistakes. Forgive me and change my life. I confess Jesus Christ is my Lord, is Savior, Transformer, Receive me today, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. And if you pray something as simple, that doesn't have to be the same words. In your own words, just tell God what's in your heart. He'll hear. And t- can I tell you, even though you may be stammering, lips that are stammering, words that are unsure, God will hear your heart and God will transform your life. And a challenge charged to each one of us. God has chosen you for this season. Not an accident that you're here. The Bible says that while you were yet formed, God knew your name, called you. He's called you to make a difference. How do you make a difference? It begins with having open eyes, truly. It doesn't begin with some powerful manifestation. It just begins with open eyes that are willing to see and are willing to see clearly. Show the world the changed story of your life. You are not a secret agent for Jesus. Be bold in your witness. God boldly saved you, but God boldly delivered you, and we can be bold in our testimony. For the Bible says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone, the beggar, pauper, the rich, everyone. It's the gospel for each. And as we live our life, be that authentic voice of God's love in your maximum impact environment. Speak of his love. Show his love. Demonstrate his love as you see the needs of those around you. And invest in making a difference. We are in a missions conference, the last Sunday of our missions conference. And my word to you is this. It's not just around the world, my friend. It's also right here in our own backyard. Within the shadow of the steeple of this church, there are people that are crying and are in need of help. But I would encourage you this morning to invest in making a difference in missions as well. World missions. U.S. missions and home missions as well. And you can't do it all. Don't give up. Don't give up. The man who brought this beggar to Jesus couldn't give him sight, but he could take him to the one who could. Don't give up. Together we can do more than any of us can do alone. The ushers are coming forward. But before you come forward, we want to hand out to you, if you haven't already received our 